Now that you have your latex mold all ready to go, I'd like to take you through the process of just casting it in plaster of Paris. First thing we need to do is cut a hole in this cardboard box so we can just place our mold in and then we can fill it with plaster of Paris. Just so that these pieces will slip through the hole and it will be held by this latex flange. With a Stanley knife, just cut around the shape that I've drawn. Once I've got the hole, put my latex mould through the hole, see that it sits there just right. Now you might be wondering why I'm going to explain the process of mixing the plaster correctly. You might think just need plaster and water, mix it together, pour it in the mould, easy. But finish up with two things you don't want. One is a lot of dry powder that's not mixed in, it'll still be in lumps because it's difficult to mix in. And the second thing you don't need is more plaster than the mould will take. Just means waste. So to eliminate that, there is a very, very simple process. The first thing is the water goes into the mixing container first. And you say, how much water? Well, technically you need about a third the volume of your mould. So between a third and a half would be good going. I could pour it in there and then divide it into three, or I can just make a pretty reasonable estimate about how much water would fill that mould, and then I've got about half the quantity in here in the container. The next process is just very, very carefully putting the plaster of Paris into the water, and instead of just tipping it in, I'm going to use a spoon to just put it in bit by bit. What I'm doing is trying to sprinkle the plaster in so that it doesn't get lumpy. And the reason I'm doing this way is that I can be assured of getting the correct ratio of water to plaster. The mix will be just right. Move the mould around a little bit. Notice that I'm not doing any mixing yet. I'm just getting the quantity, the ratio, plaster to water, just right before I do any mixing. Now there is a reason for that, and that is I'm going to keep sprinkling powder until the water cannot take any more powder. I'm just going around and making sure that all the water that's in the container has been absorbed in the powder. There might be a little bit of dry powder on the top but basically it's... And there we go. Now once I've got the all the powder dampened with the water, I just very carefully start to stir it in. You'll notice I'm not beating the heck out of it. I don't want too much air in it. In fact, the air that is captured into this mixture will form little bubbles and could mar the surface of our casting. I'm going to do something else that you may or may not do. I have some red pigment and you're kit contains these pigments and what I intend to do is just mix a little bit of pigment in because my castings are going to be a bronze colour and in order to do that 
it's better if instead of just a white casting, I've got some colour mixed into the plaster. Sometimes to just have it a little bit unmixed means you get this kind of marbly effect. So pour it in the mould. Just a little bit. I take the mould out of the holder and you'll notice that I squeeze the mould because I want to completely coat the surface of the mould before I put the rest of the plaster in. Then I go ahead and put some more plaster in. I'm going to tap the mould with my fingers underneath, just tap it like that and that's causing all the little air bubbles that might be in there to go floating up to the surface. Now the casting is set. About two or three hours is generally enough. Don't rush it. Now you'll notice in order to get this casting out of the cardboard frame holding it, I've just placed a little cut in here with a Stanley knife because when the mould was flexible it just slipped through the hole nicely but now we have a casting in there and it needs a little bit more space so that the mould and the casting can come out. Here we have it coming out of the box. Now the process just breaking away the edges. Once we get the flange separated from the casting, we then very carefully just fold the mould inside out. Open it away from the base. I'll put a little bit more talc powder because the mould is still a little bit sticky and this stops it sticking to itself. Very carefully just start to get the mould peeling off. Across the arms. And here we have our casting. Exactly as the plasticine original, all ready for our coating now. Is that because these two heads were touching, which means there's plaster across there, you can see that there, and then the latex mould joined underneath, underneath the chins of the two figurines. So before I cast it, what I did was just placed a little cut in here so that when it came time to pull it out, this latex that was joining together underneath their chins, I just cut with the Stanley knife through there and that enabled me to peel the mould off and yet it still formed with this shape underneath their chins. Alright? There we have it. Ready for coating which will be the next video.